Okay, in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to uh, create lives so that basically we'll start out with three lives and when the bomb does collide with the ball, you would lose a life. If you lose three lives, the game would be over. Okay, so there are a couple of things we're going to have to uh, account for here. I'm going to go back to the ball as the object that I start working on. Uh, we could say, in this case, I'm better off saying uh, going under other and choosing game start. If I gave you three lives when the ball was created, then any time the ball, let's say, disappears and is recreated, you're going to get another three lives, which we don't want. You want to only get your lives at the start of the game. Because the ball is present at the start of the game, this is a good choice. So when the game is started, under score, I'm going to award uh, or give three lives. Okay? Now, not only that, I'm also going to have to click and bring this in for score caption for show um, to show the lives. Now this, make careful note of this. By default, games are used to having, or, or game maker is accustomed to you showing the score by default. So it says show score, show, and score caption, score. Under show lives and show health, if you notice, they're both selected as don't show. So at this point, if I were to play the game, even though score would be accounted for, it wouldn't be showing it. I mean, so the lives would not be showing, and that would present a problem. So for lives, I'm going to choose show. Later, we'll deal with score. For now, let's just say we're not going to. So I won't show score right away. But I have lives showing, and the caption will be lives. So at this point, at the beginning of the game, it's going to show that, so it's going to show the lives set to three. I'll just show you that real quick. Okay, so see, level one, protect the ball from harm, lives three, okay? So we have our lives in place. Now notice also from what I was talking about with the score, as well as with the uh, actions here for score, there are three built-in scoring mechanisms in Game Maker. One is score, which is usually used for points. One is lives, which like in this case, if you lose a life, you know, it would go down and a certain number when you have no lives left, you would the game would be over, let's say. And then you could also use health as a built-in mechanism. So if I wanted, maybe instead of losing a life when the uh, bomb hits me, maybe I lose 20 health, and then when my health gets down to zero, I lose a life. When my lives get down to zero, the game is over. So there are those ways. Now, you can also, you know, Think of it like you always have three built-in scoring mechanisms. If you want to have a time limit for your game, instead of health, you could change your health to be time remaining and just program it in such a way that it deals with time instead of health, and that would work fine, okay? So just think of it like you always have at least three built-in scoring mechanisms, okay? So I've got that set. Now, when my bomb collides with the ball or when the ball collides with the bomb, um, I'll say when uh, the ball collides, I'll say when a bomb collides with the ball, because in this case the bomb's moving towards the ball. I'm going to have it when it collides with the ball, a couple of things happen, okay? Now, we know right off the bat from what we talked about with score that I want to set the score now to be negative, well, I want to lose one life. So I'm going to make it negative 1, but if I just set it to negative 1, the score, the lives would now become negative 1. If I set it relative, that means that relative to the number I had, it's going to be minus 1. So if I had 3 and I lose 1, it's going to be 2. If I have 2 and I lose 1, it's going to be 1. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Now, I have to also account for what should happen to the ball when it gets when it loses this life. One of the things um, I like to do is have it move back to the starting position. So under move, there's jump and jump to start. In my opinion, this is uh, one of the best ways to deal with the ball, you know, that it goes back to start and you're back in that same position. The other thing you got to keep in mind is that 
this, um, the bomb is still kind of, you know, there. I personally think most games it makes sense to now destroy that bomb as well, okay? So if it collides, I want it to destroy the, that particular instance of the bomb um, so that it's not like, like, because the other thing you gotta keep in mind is if I'm, if it's hitting me and it's still hitting me, I'm gonna keep losing lives until something happens. The fact that I moved to start is okay, but if I'm in my starting position and that one bomb hits me and I jump right back to start and it's still touching me, I'm just gonna keep losing lives. This way that one bomb goes away. So I'll try this so far. Okay, so let's see what happens when I, when a bomb hits me. Okay, I did lose the life. Interestingly, my ball is not jumping to start. Not really sure why. I could still get rid of these. Okay, and in theory, that should mean that I finish the level and move on. If I lost all my lives, it should be game over. So let's see. When um, I'm going to change it, the order here, see if that makes a difference. Okay, it might be. Um, ah, here's the problem. I have it as self jumping to start. Self in this case is still the bomb. So it's going to be other, which is the ball. So this should work this time. Okay, see how it goes back to start and the bomb's disappearing and whatnot? Okay, I could also add points if when I hit the bombs. Okay, and there, technically I'm done. I have one life left. Okay, now we have to figure out what's going to happen when we uh, run out of lives, but we'll do that in our next lesson.